Okay, let's talk about the CLEP College Algebra exam. And what I have here is a practice problem uh, that you're definitely going to want to know how to be able to do this particular type of problem. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you're studying for the CLEP uh, College Algebra exam. The CLEP program in general is a fantastic program because, as you probably well know, if, um, if you pass these various CLEP exams, you're going to get college credit for that particular uh, course. And, you know, you can't do that with everything in college. So if you have an opportunity, um, if you know a subject pretty well and, and you have the opportunity to take the CLEP, you really should because you're going to be saving yourself time and money uh, in school. I mean, college uh, is expensive enough as it is. So if you can, you know, put the work in and um, get credit just based upon your knowledge, you definitely should do it. And it's a win win situation as well because. Worst case, even if you don't pass uh, the exam, you've definitely improved your math skills and you'll, you'll be that better off uh, in, uh, in college. Now, um, I want to let you know before we get started that I offer a CLEP College Algebra um, math prep course. I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video if you kind of like my teaching style. My background is I'm a uh, middle and high school math teacher, even taught some college, so do a lot of math instruction for uh, various purposes. but uh, test preparation is a big area that I'm involved in. So anyways, again, I'll leave the link in the, uh, in the description of this video of my CLEP College Algebra um, exam test prep course. But I want to get to this problem here. Now, this is definitely something that you would want to be able to handle, um, a type of problem that you'll definitely need to be able to handle at the College Algebra level. So what I'd like you to do is to simplify this expression. Okay, so you're working with powers and exponents. Simplify it the best you can, and what that means generally is that there's no negative exponents, and all the variable, all the bases, and everything else are just kind of put together. So if you want to pause the video and, and uh, uh, see if you can do this, I would say I would encourage you definitely to try it. Of course, I'm going to go over it, and I'm going to go over it uh, right now. So let's get into this. So this is really a problem that involves your knowledge of, of powers and exponents. And there's various rules of powers and exponents. There's not too many, but you definitely need to know how to do this. Now, there's different ways you can approach this problem. In other words, uh, when you're dealing with uh, simplifying an expression with powers and exponents, um, you can take different paths and still get to the right answer. So here's the problem. I can go this step, I can take this step, and I get this step, and I can get to the solution. So if if what you, you know, did in your work doesn't match up to what I'm going, going to do, don't worry about it. What you really want to do is compare um, the final answer, okay? Because, uh, again, you can be taking correct steps, just be taking a different path, but we'll all end up in the same kind of uh, destination if we did it right. Okay, so let's get to it first. I'm going to work on simplifying this uh, numerator first. So I have a, this whole thing is to the third power. So I'm going to distribute this third power in. Now I'm, um, you know, going to do this problem and try to teach a little bit about it, but I can't turn this into a complete full lesson on powers and exponents because it would just be too long. So if you don't really quite understand what I'm doing, obviously, you know, it's a good sign that you, you really need to do some review and that's what my test prep course would be four. But let's get into this. So this would, when I did distribute this three in, this is really two to the first power. So this becomes two to the third. Now I'm going to take this three, I'm going to multiply it by the, by the exponents on in, in that are inside of the parentheses. So this kind of goes to this concept here. Here's a rule. Oops. A to the M all that to the n power is equal to a to the m times n. So you're distributing that outside exponent to the inside exponent. So we have 2 to the third times, uh, this is x squared, because I'm going to multiply that, that squared by 3, so that's going to be x to the 6, and this would be y to the negative 6. Okay, and that's going to be all over 10 x to the negative 5, times x to the negative 6. Now I've got these little multiplication dots in here. Typically I wouldn't be writing that, but I'm, I'm doing that just to kind of uh, um, kind of emphasize that these are factors. This is a product, right? This is all being multiplied together. All right, so now let's take a look at 
the numerator and denominator separately and see if we can simplify anything more uh, you know when we look at them just individually here for a second so I'm looking at the numerator only and I'm like can I do anything else is there anything I could do with the X and Y's and the, um, uh, this number here well I can simplify this number I could turn it into an 8 right 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2 so that's 8 times X to the 6 and to add a y to the negative 6 and that's all over now I'm gonna look at the denominator I'm gonna do the same thing is there anything else I can kinda of simplify when I just look at the denominator by itself and no there really isn't so I have uh, 10 x to the negative 5 y to the negative 6 alright so now let's continue the problem down here I have 8 x to the 6 y to the negative 6 all over 10 to the x to the negative 5 y to the negative 6 okay so now there's a couple options here uh, we have x's involved right so we have uh, the base of x and we have this base of y so these are powers so we somehow I'm gonna have to get these guys here linked up I'm gonna have to simplify those guys and I'm also gonna have to simplify the y's so now how can I do that well, there's two approaches. Let's, let's just break this out a little bit further here. Let's just look at the x to the 6 and y to the uh, x to the negative fifth power. So we have two options when I want to simplify this. This is division of powers, so I can write this as x to the 6 minus a negative 5. Okay. It goes to the property a to the m over a to the n is equal to the uh, a to the m minus n. Again, I'm um, I can't turn this into a complete full lesson because there's a lot to cover here. But hopefully, you know, this is familiar stuff to you, especially if you're, you know, you've taken college algebra or algebra two in the past. So this here would be x to the now six minus minus five. So this would be x to the six minus minus five is going to be x plus five. So this would be x to the eleventh power. Okay. So I kind of did it you know I digress there for a moment to say okay, this is one approach we could use another approach we can use is we can bring this power of X up next to this guy or X we can I can either move this X to the 6 to the denominator or the X to the negative 5 to the numerator now the way that would look is the following okay if I have X to the negative 5 down here and X to the 6 if I wanted to move this power up into the numerator I can all I have to do is change the sign of the um, exponent so that would be X now becomes uh, not negative 5 is going to become X to the fifth times X to the sixth and I can get back to X to the eleventh okay so again when we're fully simplifying powers and exponents we want to leave our final answers with positive exponents that's generally um, kind of like the convention that most teachers will you know uh, establish when they're, they're saying simplify this out they don't want they want all the powers uh, together uh, if you have the same basis you want to put the, everything together and you don't want to leave anything with negative exponents as a general rule of thumb okay now let's get back to this now that I kind of went over that let's go back to this place here in the problem okay and I'm gonna pick it up down here and we're gonna apply what we just learned okay now when I do that I'm gonna first address this 8 and 10 so that's just like a regular fraction here right so I can reduce that down to 4 fifths okay now I'm gonna say okay I'm gonna move this X upstairs next to this X to the 6 so I got X to the 6 times X to the fifth we just talked about how I can do that right and I'll move this y to the negative 6 down to the denominator because I want to uh, illustrate to you it works both ways okay so I have this y to the negative 6 right here okay but I want to put this other y to the negative 6 down next to it so I can uh, use the product rule so when I do that this y to the negative 6 becomes y to the positive 6 power okay so now let's go ahead and simplify the numerator here let me just kind of give ourselves some more room so I have 4, okay, x to the 6 times x to the 5th. Remember, you add the exponents when you're multiplying powers of the same base. 
So this is going to be x to the 11th. Now I have my 5 down here. And when I add these guys together, I get what? Negative 6 plus 6 is y to the 0. So I purposely did this problem because I wanted to see if you knew what y to the 0 or x to the 0 or anything to the 0 power is what. And hopefully you didn't say 0. Okay, <laughs> a lot of students will answer that. Anything to the zero power is one. Okay, so we have four x to the eleventh y to the zero power is one. So that's just one times five. So this would be our final answer here. Okay, four x to the eleventh over five. So if you got that answer, but you took a different path, and that's that's excellent. Okay, now if you kind of like left your answer here, or maybe you know, forgot to uh, finish it up because you still had some negative exponents, then maybe finish it out. But this would be the final answer here. Okay. All right. So again, one, uh, and I would classify this as a, as a kind of an easy problem uh, for, let's say, the college algebra level. So if, if you kind of struggle with this, then you're, you definitely need to do some work. But um, again, I have a fantastic CLEP uh, college algebra math prep course. If you think you like my teaching style, I'll leave it again. The, uh, the link to that course in the description of this video. Also on my YouTube channel, literally I have hundreds of, of uh, videos on my YouTube channel that can definitely help you out. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. And if you like this video, I'd definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave us some feedback. Uh, what what uh, math course did you take or math courses did you take in high school? Um, college algebra isn't typically a name of a course that's offered in high school. But generally speaking, college algebra is pretty much on par with, let's say, Algebra 2 at the high school level. Pre-calculus is generally a little bit more advanced than, than college algebra. So if you took Algebra 2 or an Algebra 2-like course, then you should be, you know, you have learned a good majority of the material that's going to be covered uh, on the college algebra CLEP exam. But anyways, with that being said, I hope this uh, video found you well and it helped you out. Um, I definitely appreciate your time. Wish you all wish you all the best on the CLEP exam. Definitely go for it. I mean, the worst that can happen is you don't know, pass, okay? But if you study, the best that can happen is you're going to save yourself a ton of uh, money and time, okay? So with that being said, thank you so much, and have a great day.